goodness. I'm so excited. I'm always excited about Help Me Tips and Sips. Help Me Tips and Sips is one of my favorite times. I love to help help me. I love to be able to give them information. And I love my sparkling juice. So I have my sparkling juice and I'm encouraging you not just to have sparkling juice, although I do encourage you to have sparkling juice. I encourage you to take some time to really study your help meet role. I know people get tired, like does she ever talk about anything more than becoming a help meet? Not usually. I make sure I understand the concept of my role. And I was working with one of my mentees today and I had to say one more time, being a help meet is a role that is seasonal because to be suitable you have to adjust to the times and the seasons of God times and seasons of your life times and seasons of your king's life so you have to be able to tap into what Holy Spirit is doing so many people feel like oh oh my goodness help me this all about just being quiet well let me tell you being quiet is a big one but it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. So I do these tips and tips so that we can start talking about our everyday life as a help me. It's not easy. But what do we do? When we come in, we start declaring because your, your words have power. Your words have power. So I love it when you come in and say, I'm a help me suitable. And I'm sipping, what are you sipping today? I have apple elderflower and you all, you know, I, I'm, I got my new fancy sparkling juice. And I didn't know that, you know, sparkling juice could get so amazing. But, ah, before I give you the tip, oh my goodness, I gotta show you one, one of my beautiful gifts. Somebody tag Kelly, mm, mm, mm. One of my mentees, she's so sweet. So I don't know anything about wine because I don't drink wine, but I love sparkling juice. And I got this new fancy sparkling juice and it has corks. So you all know I didn't know what the corks, I didn't know how to put them back in and I didn't know, but I, I didn't know y'all that they have cork. I don't even know what to call it. They got something you put the corks in. So. Since you all are with me, hey, my first cork. So we will put this so we can see it. Cause yeah, don't judge me. I drink a lot of sparkling juice. So this will be our very first. Uh oh, who is sipping pumpkin spice coffee? Yes, yes, yes. I digress. I mean, I love my sparkling juice. Yes, it's a cork holder. But it's shaped like, yes, and this isn't the only one I got. Mm, thank you, Kelly. So you are witnessing my first cork. Now, it doesn't look like much yet, but trust me, <laughs> this will be full. It will be filled. So now I have reason to keep drinking my fancy sparkling juice by Belle de France with the cork in it. All the fancy ones with the extra bubbles. I love it. I love it. Mm. So apple elderflower. Why do I drink sparkling juice? Does it have anything to do with me being a help meet suitable? No. But I enjoy sparkling juice, so I have to have something that I enjoy while I'm declaring and while I am taking the time to become a help meet that is suitable. If you think you're going to read one book, say a couple of prayers, and all of a sudden you're going to be a help meet, you may be a help meet for that moment. You may act like a help meet for that moment, but you won't be able to become a help meet for the, a lifestyle, for a lifetime. And many people reach out because they'll ask me, well, what was that one thing you did that brought Gerald home? First of all, it wasn't any one thing I did. It was shifting and changing and, and, and becoming all God has asked me to be and then being committed to continuing. I know at some point, uh, I, we had said this past weekend, my husband and I would do a broadcast together about the difference between reconciliation and restoration. 
lots of people are like, I just want to get my prodigal home. If he would just come home, just come home, just come home. If he comes home and nothing has changed, mm, 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 whether that's a husband or a wife, if they come home and nothing has changed, the cycle in which you were in just will uh, uh, cause them to walk back out. Mm -mm, sipping. I'm a teacher and preach tonight because I was not planning. I was not planning to even talk about this. Did I even say, Lord, have mercy? I'm so excited about helping some people. My name is Yvette Benton, and I'm the author of Help for the Help Me. One of the reasons God had to help me become a help me is because I kept telling him how good of a wife. I kept telling God and myself how good of a wife I was. But God was like, you're a good wife, but you're not a help me that is suitable. If you're not a help me and he needs help, when he comes home, he's got not, if he doesn't find the help he needs, he's just leaving again. You all know the story of the prodigal son, but that father was prepared. That father didn't just go looking, didn't just say, I want my son back. Yes, he was looking. Yes, he wanted his son back. But as soon as he saw a glimpse, of his son. He could call on the road. He could call for the fatty cat. Everybody was in place. That means he was prepared. When my prodigal husband came home, he found a help me. Now we have been separated. If you know our testimony, we have been separated multiple times. So I've been there, done that with him being gone, coming back home, things be getting a, to be like a big time disaster and him like, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I hate you. I'm never coming back. All of that stuff. And I'm like, hit the door. I was fine with that. But God was not. Oh Lord, that's still, I was fine with it. But God was not. Mm. So then God said, if you're going to do this, then that means you got to submit to me. You think this is about your marriage. This is about your role. Oh, Lord, step somebody, step. You think it's about your marriage. I'm talking about being obedient. This, this. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. When God told me that, I realized this was about his relationship with me. I realized this was about me being obedient to the word of God. When I realized that, I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? I submitted. I let go. I said, I'm not going to do it my way. I'm going to do it your way. And then he said, finally, okay, now I want you to become a help me. Okay, God, what does that mean? Here it is. You go to Genesis 2 and 18, and I'm going to walk you through this journey, but you got to submit. You got to listen to me. You got to understand your authority. We're going to fight for my son. Mm. We. Did you hear what I said? Mm. God said, we're going to fight for my son. I'm going to teach you. Here's the deal. Lots of people are looking all over the place. You got to get resources. You got to get help. But the most important thing you have to do is understand how to hear God's voice. Understand how to obey his voice. Understand how to submit to God. Submitting to my husband was easy. I realized I didn't know how to submit to God. I didn't know how to be a helpmate that was suitable. I didn't know how to, to present an atmosphere or prepare an atmosphere for my prodigal husband to return to. It, it wasn't about me begging him to come home. It wasn't about me making him feel guilty. It wasn't about me telling him this is happening and your kids need you and you're running away. I tried all that. Let me give you a, a hint. Most prodigals already know the things that they've done. So repeating it only causes the atmosphere to be the exact atmosphere that pushes them out. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. Nobody is justifying anybody being a prodigal, a child, or a spouse. But the reality is God can help us prepare a, a, an environment that's conducive for their deliverance, that's conducive for peace. Because God is all about turning the other cheek. God is about forgiving 70 times 7. God is all about unconditional love. The world will tell us, oh, you better wait till this happens and wait till that happens. But I'll challenge you. I'll challenge you, help me, 
ask God first. Oh, oh, what? Don't, don't ask your friends. Don't ask your, you, you, don't, don't consult your flesh. Ask God first. And when you ask God, if you're honest, he'll say, love him. He'll say, be patient. He'll say, just, just be quiet. He'll say, don't say that right now. Apologize. When I tell you I had to learn how to become a help me because I understood the power of an apology. I understood the power of being quiet. I understood the power of submission. And one major thing I understood was the power of honor. I had to honor God first. I had to honor God first. When I honored God, he would tell me to honor my husband. It was easy to do once I understood. I better honor this word. I better honor God. I better create this atmosphere. What is wrong with creating an atmosphere of peace? Nothing. Nothing is wrong with it. So I learned how to be a helpmeet that was suitable. I learned that when my husband could come home, remember, it, he, he, God even kept him away long enough for me to understand what to do. I was frustrated. I'm like, well, how long is this going to... It's going to take as long as it takes for you to be right. So when he comes, he doesn't leave again. So when he comes home, he finds peace. When he comes home, you are strong enough, strong enough to handle what I'm going to tell you to do. Many of us hear God's voice. We're not strong enough to follow. Many of us know God is telling us, don't say this, don't do this, don't go here, don't go there, don't text, don't call, don't do this, don't do that, do this, do this. And don't do that. But our flesh is not under subjection enough to stop doing those things. Mm, mm, mm. Our flesh has said, oh, he's going to listen. He's going to call me. He's going to pay me. He's going to come home. He's going to not do this, not do that. He's going to leave her. He's going to stop doing this. Really? How's that working for you? Because it wasn't working for me. When my husband came home and stayed home, it's because he found a helpmeet that was suitable. He found a helpmeet, and let me tell you how many people laughed at it. Let me tell you how many people thought it was crazy. And not only did he find a helpmeet the time he came home, he continues to have a helpmeet. We had to work through some deliverance. We're still working through some things. Nothing is perfect, but I work on my role with God. And God was telling me what to do. He was navigating. He, he caused me to have strategies. So when I'm on to help me tips and sips, I'm trying to help with strategies that God gave me. I'm giving you scriptures that God is showing me and God showed me previously. I'm telling you how to create an atmosphere that's conducive for deliverance because many of our kings need deliverance so that they're real and true the honor of them, their true gifts, their true callings can come forward. We talk about birthing out the king. We talk about making sure they feel loved and respected. I know, I know, everybody wants to know, well, what about me? God took care of me, and God is still taking care of me, and God is still showing up and showing out. He'll do what you need done. He will take care of you. He wants us to understand. Serve him. Don't ask all the questions. Honor God. Don't ask questions. Just obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So today's tip, make sure your king is finding a help me. If you're not married, become a help me that is suitable even prior to being married. Somebody's got to let people who aren't married know. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have gone through what I went through. I want to help uh, single women uh, so much. I'm going to be doing a webinar for single women because I don't want people to go through what, what, I've, what I've gone through. I don't even want it. And if I knew what I know, and it's all scripture, people don't understand how much submission and honor and respect what it would do for your relationship. Men go where the honor is, period. That's where they go, where the honor is. But that's how God made them. That's why he told us to honor. That's why he told us to respect. We're just doing what the word says do. What the word says do. It was in my spirit to just tell people, there are some people who have some prodigal children. There are some people who have some prodigal spouses. And all they want is for their spouse to come home. Let me tell you, having them come home is where the work begins, not ends. 
We have people who have relationships, they have marriages, and they're just not where they feel like they need to be. They're, they're ready to leave. They're ready to, to give up on their relationship. Become a helpmeet that is suitable. Trust God. Obey God. Get your healing. Get your deliverance. And make sure you're suitable. Don't put all the attention on what, the, what, what someone else is saying. Don't put all the attention on what someone is not doing. Make sure you're suitable. Make sure you understand your authority. Make sure you understand how to cast out a devil. If you're dealing with devils, you got to cast out a devil. If you're dealing with spiritual warfare, you got to understand spiritual warfare. Do not show up to a war with a plastic gun. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. Who am I telling? Who am I talking to? I'm talking to someone showing up for an out and out war and you showing up with a plastic gun, water guns, all of that. Play, play weapons won't work in a spiritual war. You better get your weapon. You better understand God's will. When I tell you every demon that was agitating my husband through drugs and perversion, they met peace. They met love. They met their match in the spirit. I had to do the very opposite so I could drive those demons right out of my household. Drive those demons right out of my husband. Drive those demons right out of myself first. So when I tell you to become a help me that's suitable, it's not just a catchy thing. It's not, and yeah, we do t-shirts and cups and all that, and that's wonderful. But today I wanted to remind you on Sips and Tips, this is about a lifestyle. This is about something you have to learn and something you continue to learn. The help meet my husband needed when he was strung out on drugs and dealing with all kinds of perverse uh, generational curses is a totally different help me than he needs now while he's operating in his apostolic call. Totally different. I got to stay suitable. I want you to stay suitable. So yeah, I sit back. I get my sparkling juice and I look things up. I talk to God. I ask God, what do I need to do? What does he need? How do I need to pray? What do I need to pull down? What stronghold is trying to come against him? What's happening in his life? What's happening in his dreams? Where do you see him? Where have you called him? What am I missing? What am I doing? What am I not doing? And I'm honest with myself and I'm taking my sip when he gets real, real hard on me. I'll be like, Lord, that's what you want me to do? Woo, let me get my, my, my sparkling juice. You said there's another another level of forgiveness I need. I thought I was done with that. But apparently you're bringing it up again and that means I got to handle it. Let me get my sparkling juice. Mm. I drink my uh, apple elderflower sparkling juice or whichever flavor I've decided to have on whichever night God and I are talking. I'm like, okay, God, give it to me. Yvette, yesterday when you said this, Fix it. Today, when you were thinking that, straighten it out. When you were thinking and, and, and then you said, and then we and you and I talked about it, or when you were talking and I said, stop talking, that's enough, and you kept going, we're going to work on that, you and me. You're going to be suitable. This is not just something you preach. This is something you live. This is something you do. This is who I called you to be. This is a role I expect. Oh, oh, someone's going to get revelation. This is a role God expects to see. Mm. If he knew Adam needed Eve to be a help me, then he knows your king needs you to be a help me. That's the declaration. God needs me to be a help me. That's the declaration. If you realize this is not something, mm-mm-mm. That's just to get your husband home. That's just to make your husband act right. That's just to get your prodigal home. If you realize this is something God expects from you, it will change your whole life. It'll change your relationship with God. Oh, yes, it'll, it'll fix your marriage, but it'll fix everything else in your life too. But it's not something you do to get a husband home or else that's witchcraft. That's just control. That's just manipulation. This is something you do. As a lifestyle, something you do because you love God. Your submission to your spouse is your service unto God. You got to read your word. You got to listen to the Holy Spirit. You got to do what God says do. So tonight, I'm encouraging you. 
Don't just tap into being a help me every once in a while. Don't just read the book and then put it down. Don't just do the workbook and say, oh yeah, that's, that's fine. It's a little bit too hard. If I'm doing this, what are they doing? I don't know if I can do all of that. Well, it's our reasonable service. Come on now. It's our reasonable service. It's what we do. It's what God expects. God needs us to be a help me. Do you see the state of the world right now? Do you see the state of the church right now? God needs help me. He needs people who are submitted to him, who hear his voice, and are willing to fall into his full submission. So this is a lifestyle. Whew, I'm excited. And if you're watching this live, or in the next few days, September 18th, Friday, September 18th, 2020, I'm doing a webinar, What About the Kids? What about our kids? When you have marital stress or marital problems or a prodigal spouse, what about the kids? It's a conversation that's going to be had and it's some things that God has given me some revelation on. We can never, No one's going to have all of the answers, but there, I'm doing a webinar because we've got to talk about some ways to assist our kids through marital problems. So I'm doing this webinar this Friday. And if you are watching and that date has already passed and it'll be available, the replays will be available on our website. And how you register, if you're interested on doing it live, GeraldAndYvette.com. GeraldAndYvette.com. Go to our website, register. We are in high expectation of what God's going to reveal, what God's going to do. So many of you are already signed up. That's amazing. That's wonderful. I can't wait to teach and train. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then replays are available to those who register. And then again, it will be on our website after that. If you're seeing this on replay after the, the 18th of September, 2020. Well, it is Wednesday and it's time for me to meet my mentoring group. We're about to do midnight prayer and I love it. So thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for being with me. Thank you, Kelly, for my cork holder. I didn't even know there was a thing. But my sparkling juice is getting more and more um, upgrades. Upgrades. I'm excited. So we put our first cork in the cork holder. And I'm having apple elderberry sparkling juice. And you are becoming a helpmeet that is suitable. You are becoming a helpmeet that is suitable. I appreciate the work you're doing. If you don't have the book in the workbook, I'm no, I don't know. If you need help learning spiritual warfare, you might need to look into my mentoring program if you're ready for discipline, if you're ready for order, if you're ready to learn, to be taught, to be trained, to be pushed so that you can understand your spiritual gifts, so that you can get delivered, and then your purpose and your destiny can come forward. And oh, by the way, you will become a stronger help me at the same time. We can do all of those things because God is with us. And we can do all things through Christ because he's strengthening us. So go to GeraldAndEvent.com. We have all kinds of resources, information. If you don't get the information from us, please, Get the information from someone, but just get your information. All right. Thanks for joining me on Help Me Tips and Tips. My sparkling juice is still sparkling, so I've got to finish it up. You have a good night. I'm declaring you are a help me that is suitable. It's a lifestyle.